Hi everyone, my name is Tima Borges and I'm humbled to share this time with you as we reflect on being formed after his own heart. First, let's begin with prayer. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created, then you shall reveal the face of the earth. O God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you have taught the hearts of your faithful. In that same spirit, help us to know what is truly right, and always rejoice in his consolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. After reading the Regnum Christi essay by Father Daniel Brandenburg, titled, Until Christ Be Formed in You, I was inspired to use that as the basis for my reflection today. Regnum Christi places a lot of importance on formation because we're called to evangelize society. Our mission is to make the mystery of Christ present wherever we are. Well, we cannot give what we do not have. Our mission to preach the kingdom of Christ to every heart and whole of society requires that we're men and women of character, well-formed and dedicated to Christ's cause. The only way to reveal part of the mystery of Christ is if we ourselves are being formed into Christ. This formation is one of the many things that attracted me to Regnum Christi. I was raised in a Catholic home with some formation, but I realized how little I knew about my faith, and there was a growing thirst to learn more. My encounter with Christ and this thirst to learn more happened simultaneously. And maybe that's the way it is for many of you as well. The first time I encountered Christ was while reflecting on the woman at the well in John chapter 4. When Jesus asked the woman for water, I related to that as he was asking me to serve him in the church, to become an apostle. Over the years, when I reflect on this gospel, it always brings another aspect to light and draws me deeper into my relationship with Christ. Most recently, I was introduced to artwork that depicts the woman emptying her jar while receiving a jar from Jesus. And the image struck me as another call to empty out my heart. Whatever attachments and control I was still trying to hang on to, just to, to empty that out so that Christ can fill it. And just as the title to Father Daniel's essay struck me, because it points to the one basic truth that is the basis for all that we do as apostles. We must give all that we can so he can fill us up with his living water. We must allow Christ to be formed within us for us to be formed into Christ. In Regnum Christi, we talk about integral formation, which entails four dimensions, spiritual, intellectual, human, and apostolic. St. John Paul the Great oversaw the synod on the lay vocation in the church, and he produced an apostolic letter called Christi Fideus Leci, where he dedicated chapter 5 to the formation of the lay faithful. He emphasized these four dimensions. Spiritual formation involves an intimate union with Christ, therefore developing a solid spiritual life built on knowledge, love, and imitation of Christ, growth in virtue, and receiving the sacraments. Intellectual formation allows us to give reason for the hope that is within us. It involves a broad and deep understanding of Catholic teaching, learning, reading, studying church doctrine and church history so that we're better able to live our faith and answer questions. Human formation is how we cultivate human virtues and values. Knowing ourselves and our nature, following natural law and gospel teachings to grow in virtue like Discipline, discretion, politeness, simplicity, and openness to others. Recognizing that there's a balance between supernatural grace and our own effort. And knowing that our emotions, knowing our emotions and our instincts and sentiments, and then forming our will. Apostolic formation is where we're called to be the hands, feet, eyes, ears, and heart of Christ the heart of an apostle that has zeal for souls. This dimension gives direction and unity to all the other dimensions. 
For example, when we work on spiritual formation, we're likely to experience a desire to share the love of Christ with others. With intellectual formation, as we read and we learn about church history and the catechism, we're going to be more equipped to face the challenges and to answer questions posed by others. And that is a type of evangelization. Also, while we're doing apostolate, many are driven into a deeper prayer life. Because apostolate comes with its challenges, and those active in it recognize that they need prayer in order to persevere. Apostolate is also a form of learning, and we can certainly learn by reading and studying and, and praying, but we also learn from experience. We learn by doing. Most importantly, if we're imitating Christ, then apostolate is not just something we do, it's who we are. We are apostles. We need to reflect on this difference, the difference of doing apostolate and being an apostle. Father Daniel says that formation is the art of motivating a person to become all God calls them to be. It's an internal work of grace. Real formation goes deeper than the externals. It's about internalizing attitudes and virtues, and it's not about compliance. Much of what I'm sharing can also be found in our Regnum Christi member handbook, chapter 6, numbers 385 to 391. Number 388 lists the various means that we have of attaining this integral formation. Spiritual direction, our encounters with Christ, study circles, our monthly retreats, the spiritual exercises, conventions, conferences, and seminars. And I know I haven't mentioned all of them. Especially now we find ourselves having so much formation at our fingertips with everyone going online. There are a lot of opportunities for formation. Praise God. Number 391 stresses the point that formation never ends and that each of us is tasked with seeking this ongoing formation so that we excuse me so that we can be of service to God and others. An apostle's formation never ends. Developing an intimate relationship with Christ is a lifelong journey. It takes hard work. We're going to fall and we need to get back up again. It's an adventure of discovery. We learn about Christ, we learn about ourselves, and we learn about the people around us. This growth is real, and our needs are going to change, so we adjust our formation efforts to match those needs. This is covered in another Regnum Christi essay by Father John Bartunek, titled The Formation Pathway. In another essay, What is Regnum Christi?, there is a mention that formation must be intentional. I understand this to mean that we are responsible for our own formation. We must seek it and participate in opportunities presented to us through the various events, seminars, retreats, etc. All these that are offered to us within the church and within the movement, as well as being intentional about the books we read, what we watch, and what we listen to. Much has already been said and written about formation. And now that I've given you a brief recap on what Regnum Christi has said about the importance of formation, I'd like to share with you what has been stirring in my own heart these past few weeks. On page 24 of Father Daniel's essay, he quotes a young woman who said, We, Regnum Christi members, seek to love so much that it creates in others a desire to love like that in return. I pondered this quote and asked myself, who loved Jesus so much? It makes us want to love like that in return. Jesus' mother and our mother, Mary. Christ was physically formed within Mary's womb. His sacred heart, brain, body were formed within her. Imitation of Mary is imitation of Christ. Jesus alone is the way that leads us to the Father. But who is more like Jesus than Mary? St. Bernard said this to Mary, God lives in you, and you live in him. You clothe him with substance of your flesh, and he clothes you with glory and his majesty. Five years ago, I was pregnant for my youngest. At 26 weeks, 
I was found to be at risk of me, him being born prematurely. So I was hospitalized for over a month. Now, during that month, I had a lot of solitary time. Unlike the other pregnancies that whizzed by because I was still working and caring for my family, I found myself alone much of the time and always aware that this little life I had inside me. I was very attentive to every movement, every discomfort, because I knew that any change could mean the onset of early labor. I was also gifted with time to pray and ponder the miracle of life that was growing inside me, wondering what plan God must have for my children and especially for this child. I imagine Mother Mary must have been always keenly aware of the miraculous life she was carrying inside her. Not much could happen to distract her from the fact that she was pregnant with a child conceived by the Holy Spirit. Mary gave herself completely to God's action. She was completely transformed into him. She became a faithful copy of him. Liturgy says, Mary is the most perfect image of Christ, formed truly by the Holy Spirit. Since Jesus came to us through Mary, it is wholly acceptable that we go to Christ through her. In the Regnum Christi member handbook on number 129, we read, Mary is a mother who accompanies, educates, guides, and sustains us. Number 172 states, an apostle of Jesus can rely on Mary as he undertakes any personal or apostolic project, as he faces struggles of life, or overcomes obstacles that hinder him on the road to holiness. Mary, inspi excuse me, Mary inspires, encourages, and effectively helps her children. With her, everything is possible. Father Daniel lists the way that Jesus formed his apostles, and we should know this so we can model it. Since Mary is a protagonist in making the mystery of Christ known, let us reflect on how Mary forms Jesus and can form us. Mary revealed Christ at the Annunciation when she consented to be the handmaid of the Lord, when she went to visit Elizabeth and responds to her greeting with the Magnificat, when she told Joseph what had been asked of her at Jesus' birth as she accepted visitors who came to see her son and at the presentation in the temple. Mary forms Jesus, not just in her womb, but as a child. Mary fed him, taught him to speak, read, write, and pray. She also modeled the way for him by following the Jewish laws and customs. Mary launched Jesus at the wedding in Cana. Jesus is God, and certainly he did not need Mary to prompt him to begin his ministry. Yet somehow she plays a key role in launching his public ministry, because through her intercession, he performs his first public miracle. Mary's not mentioned too often in scripture. So when scripture does refer to her, it's worth our attention. God has done what God has done in Mary. He also does with us. We are chosen by God. God chose Mary to be the mother of his son. He chooses each of us to carry out a vocation and a mission within the church. We are gifted with faith. Mary was endowed with grace from the moment of her conception. He gives each of us grace and faith at the moment of our baptism. That grace is ratified at our confirmation and at our incorporation into Regnum Christi when we committed to the mission of Regnum Christi at the service of the church. We are called to obedience. Mary was invited to obey God's will for her daily life, and we are also called to obey God's will every day. In conclusion, I'm going to leave you with some scripture passages that might help your meditation on how Mary forms us into Christ. At the Annunciation, where Jesus was called, sorry, where Mary was called, chosen and blessed, and becomes the spouse of the Holy Spirit. That's in Luke 1, verses 26 to 38. The Visitation, Mary's Canticle, as the mother of my Lord who comes to me. That's what Elizabeth says to her. 
Luke 2, 39 to 56. Mother of the Savior, when Jesus is born and called Savior of the world, that means Mary is the mother of the Savior. That's in Luke 2, 1 to 20. The presentation shows Mary's obedience to the law and where she first hears that a sword will pierce her heart. Just like we know that in our apostolate, there's going to be some challenges, some difficulties. And that's in Luke 2, 22 to 40. Finding Jesus in the temple, the first hint of Jesus's mission. That's in Luke 2, 41 to 52. And at the wedding in Cana, where Mary is the catalyst for his first public miracle, John 2, 1 to 12. Mary's obedience. Jesus says that all who obey God are close to him. Luke 8, 19 to 21. When people praise his mother, when someone praised her and said, Jesus said, all those who hear God's word and keep it are blessed. That's in Luke 11, 27 to 28. And at Calvary, Mary accompanies Jesus to the end. And Jesus entrusts her to his beloved disciple. He gifts her to all of us as mother of the church. That's John 19, 25 to 27. And waiting for Pentecost. Mary is with the apostles as they pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit. And that's in Acts 1, 1 to 14. I pray that these scripture passes will not only passages, sorry, will not only deepen your relationship with Mary, but will bring you closer to Jesus, and that it may also assist you in your own formation pathway. That you be open to the work that God wants to do in you and through you for the good of the church and the whole world. In our mission to make Christ's mystery present in the world, let us contemplate Mary so that we too can be formed into Christ through Mary. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Let us close by calling on our Blessed Mother's intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son.